Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to properly use a displacement texture from Polygon.com uh, in Cinema 4D with Arnold. Before we get started, let's take a look at the material we'll be using. It's Ground Asphalt Broken 001 and is easily one of my favorite ground textures here at Polygon. Um, it's brilliant for demonstrating this displacement, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, I've already got the 4K version saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link um, below the video. As a note, uh, I would recommend getting the the 4K version if you're going to be following along because with displacement you really do want as much detail from the texture as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we're going to be doing. You've probably heard of a bump map before which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. It results in a far more realistic material. Okay, so let's take a look at how to do this in Cinema 4D with Arnold. First, let's take a look at the scene we'll be using. It's just this simple plane and a HDR light, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, so what we need to do first is bring in our material. Now, I covered using the material... Con if I can click on it. <laughs> I covered using the material converter in a previous video, and I will include a link to that below this one. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go grab my material, which is down there uh, and hit convert and it will say all materials loaded successfully and it's brought in the, uh, the the node graph there so with the material selected just drag it over to your uh, to your plane and that is pretty much it <laughs> we're going to up the tiling a little bit um, just so it looks a little better when we when we do our test render and before we do anything else I'm just going to bring this viewport camera in a little closer and we'll see what the uh, what the render result looks like by default and um, yeah you might get a result like that <laughs> which uh, basically what's happened here is the displacement has pushed the plane above the uh, the view of the camera so um, let's not do that again and just come on thank you let's try that again with the camera a little higher Okay, so that's our that's our default result, and it's um, yeah, it's not great, <laughs> um, but we 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 expect this with displacement because uh, there's always a always more settings to 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 adjust before before getting a good result. Um, hence the fact we're doing this video. So let's look at turning this into a nice uh, a nice finished displacement result. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the uh, the node graph for this. So let's load that back up and just take a look at the nodes it's given us um, all of these ones up here are relate in, in relation to the actual material itself we don't need to touch uh, adjust any of these they're they're fine as is what we need to take a look at is the displacement ones so we have the displacement image here which is all set up correctly and then the actual displacement shader itself which only has a value of scale and the, uh, the zero value um, the scale is self-explanatory, that's how much displacement we're getting. Um, and the scale of z the zero value um, allows you to adjust that height. In that first render, we noticed the, uh, the floor disappeared. If you lower the, the zero value, you can, you can make minor adjustments to, to where the, uh, the floor will be visible. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be leaving these pretty much as is. We might adjust, might adjust the scale a little bit, but that's uh, that's pretty much it. The problem we're having is not actually in relation to the material itself. It's, it's to do with the amount of geometry we have to work with. Now, displacement actually physically changes the mesh itself. Yeah. So if your mesh doesn't have any, it doesn't have much geometry, there's not much for it to work with, which is why we got that rather horrendous result to begin with. So what we need to do is give it more geometry to work with. Now the easiest way to do that is to add in a subdivision surface, like so, then take the plane and make it a child of the, uh, of the subdivision, like so. Now with that done, we can start changing these settings, yeah? And this will give us, in in theory, more, more uh, geometry to work with. Now, the best one to use is the adaptive, um, just because it allows for GPU tessellation on top of the normal subdivision. So what we'll do is up the rendered subdivision to, I think, maximum six, yeah. So I'm gonna 
put that all the way up to six and then change the tessellation value to something like five. I think that will, uh, I think that will do the trick. That's basically going to give us loads and loads and loads and loads of faces to work with um, when the when the displacement kicks in. So now, if we do a render, we'll notice hopefully that the quality has improved massively and also that the render time is probably quite a bit longer. I actually uh, had to pause the the render halfway through there and and uh, quickly take another one with the camera zoomed out a bit like here um, because <laughs> I couldn't see what was going on and the reason is we've got a bit too much displacement going on now as you can see these peaks are, are way too high but you'll also notice that adding in the subdivision has made a huge difference look at look at the amount of geometry that is now being manipulated um, by the displacement so what we need to do is go back into our material and lower this scale amount. We're going to lower it down to, uh, I don't know, we'll try, uh, try a value of 2. See how that works. And again, get the camera in a little bit closer. And give that a render. Okay, so with that one, we're, we're pretty close actually. Um, and, and this is something you'll find with displacement. It, it is definitely definitely a matter of trial and error of adjusting the settings until you get the the sort of specific result that you're after um i mean this might might actually be passable for what you're using it for i i, I just think that the material would look better with just a just a little bit less maybe 70 percent of where it is now um but i think for, for the purposes of a tutorial that about covers it um the the important lesson to take away is definitely <laughs> um it's going to take multiple renders to get the to get the exact look that you're after. So, in summary, we've taken a material from Polygon.com, brought it into Cinema 4D, um, played around with Arnold's displacement system um, to find the the settings that worked well for the material uh, in question, uh, and then rendered it out with Arnold.